again and welcome back to my kitchen. Hey, today I am coming to you with one of those controversial canner type subjects again. I would like to talk to you today about ghee. Now, my disclaimer is, is that this is not an approved food item or an approved method to do at home. Um, but it has been done by millions of people for centuries. So do your research, okay? Get out there on the internet and research ghee and um, make your own decision whether you want to try to do this in your own home or not. I have found ghee to be shelf stable for years. I researched it and there are people that claim that ghee is actually shelf stable indefinitely. I've also researched on the other side of the gamut that ghee is only shelf stable for three months unless you keep it in the refrigerator and it will keep up to a year. So it is up to you as the viewer to do your own research and um, come to your own conclusions on how beneficial this will be in your home and on your pantry shelves, okay? So today I'm just going to share with you how I make and can ghee. Now, um, when you are canning butter, which butter is different than canning ghee. Butter is just bringing sticks of butter or, you know, chunks of butter, whatever. If you are lucky enough to have a cow at home or a goat at home that you can take the cream and make your own butter at home, God bless it, you're so fortunate. We used to have that, we don't anymore. But if you make your own butter or if you buy it at the store, which I am now buying butter at the store, um, if you're canning butter, which is different than ghee, it's made, ghee is made from butter, but it's, it's different, okay? If you're canning butter, I suggest canning 100% unsalted if you're doing butter. Or, at the least, do a mixture of 50% unsalted butter and 50% salted butter to can butter. Now, the reason for that is, is that after the canning process, the salted butter becomes so intensified, it's almost like five times saltier than what it would be if you were just using that fresh butter, okay? So if you're canning butter and you're not cooking the, the milk solids off to make ghee, but canning butter, I suggest either unsalted butter or 50-50% ratio of unsalted and salted. All right, and that is another video. I will have a video on canning butter. Today we are talking ghee. Now, with ghee, um, I guess ultimately the best thing would be to use unsalted butter. But in my own experience, I cannot find unsalted butter on sale in my area of the country hardly ever. Like, it's just ridiculous. I can always find salted butter on sales, but I cannot find unsalted butter on sales. And so then I would buy a whole bunch of salted butter on sale, and then I would have to invest all of this money in regular priced unsalted butter to match how much salted butter that I had gotten on sale to do a 50-50% ratio. Um, and so I started experimenting a little bit and in making ghee because I had access to salted butter that was on sale, I thought, well, let's try making ghee with 100% salted butter. And I will tell you what, amazing, amazing results. Um, when you make ghee, what you're doing is you're melting, melting the butter and you're allowing the milk solids to cook and separate and when you're using salted butter for some reason those salt molecules are bonded to the milk solids that you cook out of the ghee so when using 100 percent salted butter most of the salt molecules are bonded 
to the metal solids and removed from your ghee at the end of the process. And it surprised me what the results were. Um, by taste, I would say 85 to 90 percent of the salt was removed when making ghee from salted butter. So when doing ghee, either use 100 percent unsalted or you can use a mixture of 50% unsalted, 50% salted, or you can use 100% salted butter because most of the salt cooks right out of it. But at any rate, again, my disclaimer, this is not an approved food item or method of canning at home. But many, many, many people do this. Um, it dates all the way back to India. In your own research, you can um, look into that. India has been making ghee for centuries. Um, they feel like it has healing properties. Um, it helps uh, in flexibility of the body. They even, they even feel like maybe it helps to fight certain cancers. Um, they also have done research where they feel like it improves the intestinal walls of your body, um, which makes it so that you can more easily absorb the nutrition from your food. Um, those are all just things that I want to, uh, I guess, trigger uh, your searches. And so you just do your own research. But right now, I will tell you how I make and can ghee in my home. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that ghee is kind of a messy process, OK? What you need is you need a heavy stainless steel pot. Do not use aluminum. Do not use non-stick surfaces. Do not use um, those ceramic type heavy kettles that sometimes we cook soup in, okay? Because at the end of making ghee, what you're doing is you're cooking the butter for so long that all of the milk solids actually sink and stick and cook to the bottom and sides of the pan, okay? And so at the end of the process, it's a mess and you literally will need to use steel wool to scrape off and clean off these milk solids from your pan, okay? Think of almost uh, not the worst case scenario, but close to the worst case scenario of cooked on food you've ever had to clean out of the pan. That's what you're going to have when you make ghee, okay? I'm not somebody that sugarcoats anything, okay? I'm just telling you the truth. I want you to know what to expect and what to be prepared for. So, heavy stainless steel pot. Now, when making ghee, you can use anywhere in between four to seven pounds of butter at a time, depending on the size of the pot that you have available. I have six pounds of butter tonight that I am going to cook into ghee. And that's because I have a rather large pot. And I know once it melts and it starts kind of bubbling and whatever else, I have plenty of room in my pot that I'm not going to have boil over problems or splattering problems or any of those things. And being that it's stainless steel, I know I'm going to be able to take my stainless steel scrubby or my steel wool and scrub the heck out of that pot when I'm done. So anyway, um, first thing is, is unwrap your butter, obviously, and get it into your pan. And then the second thing is, is that you only want to do this over low or medium heat. You will have to make that decision based on your stove and your stove's performance. But you don't want this to be a super slow process, and you definitely don't want it to be a super fast process either. You want this whole process after your butter is melted and you actually start the cooking process the cooking process needs to be between 20 and 30 minutes from start to finish after it's all melted. So the cooking process from 20 to 30 minutes 
depending on how much butter you're doing at a time. You know, that will vary between four pounds and seven pounds. Tonight, I'm doing six pounds. And another thing that is very important for you to know is that you never, never stir this, okay? You're just gonna put your butter in a pan, you're gonna turn the heat on, low or medium, and then you're not gonna touch it at all, all right? For quite a while, you're not gonna touch it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to turn my burner on and I'm gonna melt my butter and bring it up to a temperature that I do not have a, a hard boil, but it gets kind of steamy, and then we'll come back, all right? So, on the burner, and on my gas stove, I'm going pretty close to low. So, we will let all of this butter melt, and we'll come back in just a little bit. All right, so it has taken approximately 10 or 15 minutes for my butter to melt. Now, I did leave my butter at room temperature so that it was actually soft. So like if I, if I squeezed it, I could leave an indentation with my finger. So this meltdown time will depend on how cold your butter is, all right? Um, I don't suggest taking it straight from the freezer and into the pan. Let it at least come to room temperature before you start this process. But mine has taken about 10, maybe 15 minutes to come to this point. Uh, and I can't see my screen. There we go. Maybe page it down just a little bit more. There. All right. You guys, I'm going to figure this out yet. <laughs> Hang in there with me. <laughs> All right. So 10 or 15 minutes, and as you can see, my butter is fully melted. I have not stirred this at all, but you can see that there's a foam that is kind of starting on top. There's no boiling, but there's a foam, and I can kind of start seeing steam come off of it. Now, like I said, you never really want to bring this to a hard boil at all. But why I came back at this point in time to show you that my butter was melted and, and not yet really doing anything interested, but it, interesting, but it's, it's melted, is that this is the point in time that I take my clean jars and I put them into a 9 by 13 cake pan and I'm sorry, you know, it's, it's old and there's baked on whatever, but it's clean, <laughs> all right? So what I have is I have pint jars and I have a half pint jar. And one of those things that I've mentioned, I think, before, probably more in comments than in a video, but a pint's a pound the world around. Um, but the thing with butter is that butter can be a solid and it can also be a liquid. And solid volume and liquid volume are a little bit different. And so what I do is I kind of figure approximately one pint per pound of butter. But then I always want to prepare at least one or two extra jars. So I had six pounds of butter. And as you can see, I have two, four, six, seven pints, and I also have a half pint, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna stick them in my cold oven, all right? Cold oven, at this point where your butter is melted, I'm sticking those jars in the oven, and then I'm gonna turn my oven on and preheat it to 220 degrees. So, I'm heating my, my clean jars up in the oven to 220 degrees. Now, the reason why I put them into a cold oven is that, just like I've spoken about before in other videos, you do not want to have what's called thermal shock, okay? Thermal shock is a cold jar and a hot product, or a hot jar and a cold product, and when those two things come together, they crash together and break the jar, all right? So it's the same thing when you're putting your jars in the oven. 
you don't want a hot oven because that environment is super hot, your jars are cold, and if you shove them into that hot oven, they're just going to go, ah, and break, all right? So you want them to adjust to the heat and heat up with your oven. All right, so while I've been chit-chatting at you, I can see that my butter is starting to do just a little bit of boiling. Oh, yep, yeah, you can see it on the pan, all right? So that tells me that I need to turn my heat down just a little bit, all right? Now, this isn't a bad thing, but I don't want it to cook too fast. I want it to be kind of a slower process. So I'm gonna, I've got to look at my flame because uh, with gas stoves, you can kind of, you know, there's a high, a medium, and low, but there's all these things in between. So I need to look at my flame to see where I want it. And on electric stoves, of course, you're going to be dealing with different things. And so, like I said, after the butter is melted, you want it to be approximately a 20 to 30 minute process to cook all of these milk solids off, all right? So, as you can see, I have a lot of foam on top of the melted butter at this point in time. I'm going to simply just stop the camera. I'm going to go, go and get a container. We're going to skim all this off, and then we'll continue. So, I'll be back in just a minute. So, as you can see, I have little tiny points of bubbling, bubbling in my pan, all right? But it's not boiling really, really super hard. It's just a very gentle, every once in a while, little bleh, 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 okay? That makes sense? What I have done is I have just taken one of my uh, glass measuring cups with, you know, take whatever you want, a bowl, a jar, whatever, okay? Since I am doing 100% salted butter, the foam that I take off at the top of this is going to be extremely salty. But use it on top of popcorn. It's amazing. It's amazing. So keep the foam that you skim off, okay? So at this point in time, I want you to take, and I want you to just take a solid spoon. Now you're not stirring, okay? Let's see if we can get you just a little bit closer here. I feel like we're so far apart. There. That feels like that feels like we're closer. All right. So we have all this foam on top of our melted, kind of gently boiling butter. I'm going to take a solid spoon, and I'm just going to very carefully scrape off this foam, okay? And this will take me a little bit to do. You don't want to go very deep. You just want to be on the very, very surface of that butter, okay? Do not stir, do not disturb what is going on beneath the surface of your melted butter. You just want to skim off of the top of the butter, okay? And get this foam removed. Now every once in a while, your pot is gonna kind of blur at you, okay? You see these little, these little volcanoes that are happening? These things blurp, and they will burn you. Okay, the dinging that you hear is my, my oven is telling me that it is preheated to 220 degrees with my clean canning jars inside of it. So that's just saying, hey, I'm ready, whenever you are. So now you can see that, oops, sorry, I'm a little bit high. You can see that I've just skimmed all that foam off. There's really no butter in there. There probably will be butter in there 
by the end. You know, you can't you can't be a hundred percent perfect and only get foam, but that's not a problem. Just try to avoid try to avoid um, dipping so deep that you remove the butter at this point in time and try to just skim just the surface. All right. So hopefully you can see. Let me see if I can bring the camera in here. Sorry guys, I'm working on just the camera stand tonight, so it's a little awkward for me. You see that gentle boil I have going on? And every once in a while you get a blurp. That is exactly the gentle boil that you want to happen. All right, so we are going to get the camera stand back up there. And, <laughs> hey, nobody ever said I was a professional, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to allow this. Now, never stirring. I have never stirred this, and I will not stir it. What you want is you want those milk solids to cook to the bottom and sometimes even the sides of the pan, all right? So you don't ever want to disturb them or scrape them off because that's what you want. You want to remove those milk solids. And every once in a while, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to skim a little bit more foam off the top, okay? Because as it cooks, more foam is made on top. You can see I had that pretty clean. And now if I kind of scrape it together. Now I haven't changed my heat at all. I found just the perfect spot on my stove and so I'm not going to change the heat at all but if I have a bunch of foam on there I'm just going to take and remove that and put that into my bowl or my measuring cup or, or my canning jar or whatever it is that you have designated for the foam. And it's kind of amazing. You can kind of watch this. And as the milk solids kind of cook off, I don't know how many of you remember lava lamps. Do you remember lava lamps? That's kind of what happens here. Is that you kind of get a whole, you kind of get a whole, uh, oop. Well, now my camera really went where I didn't want it to. There we go. You kind of get a whole lava lamp thing going on here. Let me see if I can balance my camera and very carefully, there we have a blur. See, almost like a, almost like a lava lamp effect. Those milk solids kind of come up to the surface in little volcanoes. Oh, and there's another blurb. That's exactly what you want. Just a very gentle boil. Okay? All right. So, sorry if you guys have to look at my, oop, my ceiling or <laughs> whatever else. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys, if you can't laugh at life, you know, you just got to laugh. All right, so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to cook this. And like I said before, after that butter was melted, I want in between a 20 and a 30 minute cook down period. And this is about the rate that you want your butter to be bubbling. All right. And what that's doing is that's cooking off the milk solids and the excess water that's in the butter. So this is absolutely perfect. We're going to come back in just a few minutes and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so I skimmed the foam another time while I was off cam. Sorry about the shadow there, but I just want you to see the rate of the boil. 
that I have not changed, okay? And like I said, every once in a while, it blurps at you, okay? At this point in time, you can see little, that was a good blurb. Um, you can see little fragments of white milk solids being boiled around in your pan, and that's totally normal. Just never, ever stir it, okay? All right. So I'm going to click that a little bit longer. And then... We will come back. Blur. Blur. This is why I'm saying don't get too, see how high that went? Don't you get too close. Don't let your children get too close. Don't let your pets be close. It kind of blurps. And that's why I said have a big enough pot. And if, if you have one of these little handy dandy things, cover it up. All right? Always, always safety first. And one of these little splatter guards, these, oops, as long as you don't knock it off your pan, those things are amazing. So I'm going to allow this to just keep blurping and boiling away a little bit, okay? This isn't a heavy boil. It's just a gentle boil. We're just going to keep cooking it until we see that those milk solids are starting to brown a bit. So we'll come back in just a little bit. All right, guys. So I want you to see how the boil has changed. Now, I have never stirred this. I have never changed the heat. I'm going to take the splatter guard off. And I want you to see the boil, and I want you to listen to it. All right, we're no longer getting those blurps. And what those blurps are, are pretty much water evaporating off. Now, the water content has gotten lower, and so now we're just getting these tiny little bubbles. And it almost sounds like it's frying. And now my boiling, if you will, has become more of like a sizzle, all right? So that's, what I, that's when I know that I'm getting close to the end of the cook down process, all right? Now, you're never going to get all of it off, all right? And don't feel like you have to get all of it off. Sometimes I'm a little bit OCD, and so I even go a little bit too far with it. But that is a very, very clean pot. There really isn't a whole lot of foam on top of it. And it is just, it's sizzling absolutely beautifully. And so what this is doing is this is finishing cooking off um, the excess water or moisture that was originally in the butter and all of the milk solids have sank to the bottom of the pan and now those are starting to really really cook and they're starting to brown. Um, I'll see if I can without getting burnt. I'll see if I can show you that in the camera. Do you see how, you see how these milk solids are starting to form on the bottom of the pan and they're starting to brown? That is exactly what you want. So, smells so wonderful. I'm just going to let this cook for a few more minutes and let those uh, milk solids on the bottom of the pan just kind of get a little bit more golden brown. 
and this is what flavors your ghee with that wonderful rich nutty flavor um, so I'm just gonna let it go a few more minutes and then we're gonna take the jars out of the oven the hot jars and we're gonna strain it and put it in the jars um, in the meantime while I'm letting this finish up I'm going to get my pressure canner out and I'm gonna get some water and some um, cream of tartar in there and I'm gonna get that heated up and ready for the hot ghee hot jars I need a hot canner so I'm gonna get that ready at this point in time while this finishes up cooking all right guys so we are back at the last crucial step now as you can see sorry I can't get my camera head aimed right but as you can see a lot of that sizzling has stopped and now we're at another foaming stage at this point in time I've skimmed all right and see that beautiful beautiful golden ghee underneath but when it starts doing this slower boil and it's past the sizzling stage this is the point that you want to shut off your heat so right now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skim this one last time and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I jar this up all right so we're back now as you can see I skimmed my ghee one last time look at how beautiful and golden color this is you can see in the bottom of the pan that my milk solids have now I gotta <coughs> grab my little pinchers you can see my milk solids in the bottom of the pan have turned brown all right this is absolutely perfection all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my hot prepared jars out of the oven Two hundred and twenty degree jars now I have allowed my ghee to cool just a bit I skimmed it one last time now what I do is I take a metal strainer all right and this is the smallest one that I have I like to work with small ones for this and I take clean cheesecloth and I line that strainer with the cheesecloth and then I take my funnel and I place my funnel in a jar and my strainer on top and then all I'm going to do is I'm either going to ladle or pour my ghee in whatever you are comfortable okay with your kitchen your rules all right but I feel comfortable this is not a really heavy pan so I'm just going to pour my ghee into the strainer watching to make sure that I don't overfill the jar I'm going to bring it up to one half or one quarter of an inch head space Going to be pretty close all right now this is a prime example look at guys how let's see how do i angle the pan there look at how those milk solids all right are brown down to the bottom of the pan this is why i said you are going to need one of these things to clean that pan all right no lies all reality here and that's why you want to use a stainless steel pan so now that jar is a little bit overfilled I'm gonna pause and get a teaspoon and I will be right back I overfilled a couple of jars and my last jar is not as full as I would like it to be so all I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully remove 
a few teaspoons full of my hot ghee from one jar and put it into the other jar. All right, so now I'm feeling pretty comfortable with the headspace of all of my jars and never worry about having too many jars prepared. Always over prepare on jars. If you don't need them, no problem. But if you need them and you don't have them ready, you're in a world of hurt. So now what I personally do is I take a dry cloth, all right, because I don't want to introduce any wet water or anything. We just sat here and we spent a half hour, 45 minutes of our life cooking the water out of this ghee. Now, if you reintroduce any moisture to this ghee, it will encourage uh, mold or spoilage. So I don't want to encourage anything moist on these jars. So I take a dry cloth and I wipe the rims. All right, now all you're going to do is place your lids and your rings as normal. But now remember that you are working with extremely hot uh, food and jars, all right? So make sure that you have protection if you need to hold that jar with your hand. Put those rings on whoops, finger tip tight and then put that into that hot prepared canner. Now, some people will heat the lids and the rings after they have put the ghee into the um, sterilized hot jar. They'll have hot lids, hot rings, and they call it done and shelf stable. I personally prefer to do mine like I do butter or milk. I bring it up to pressure. So I put it in my pressure canner, I heat it to a vent, I vent 10 minutes, and then I bring it up to pressure, and then off. Um, other people prefer to can it like it's meat. But I, um, I look at canning as density not necessarily ingredients, but the density of the ingredients. And butter or ghee or broth, that's not a thick, dense pack in the jar. This is all liquid. And so it does not take long for heat to penetrate it. And so I feel that just up to pressure and off is plenty good for ghee. Place my lid and bring my canner to a vent. Just like any other canning project in the pressure canner, we're going to bring it to a vent, we will vent for 10 minutes, and then with ghee, what I do is the same as butter or milk, um, well, at least what I do for butter or milk, I bring it up to pressure and then off. So, we will come back when I have done all of those steps and as I'm bringing them out of the canner, I'll show you the final product. The equivalent of my pressure canning period, which would be to vent for 10 minutes and then bring it up to pressure and off, the equivalent of hot water bathing or steam canning would be to do these for one hour in the hot water bath. And I would like you to treat them just like you do milk. Only bring the water level up to the bottom of the, the screw-on band. Oh, that's still warm from the oven. Holy Hannah. <laughs> All right, so when you're doing milk, let me see if I can see my screen here. When you're doing milk, um, if you watch my video on that, I said to for hot water bath, just bring the water level up to the bottom of the ring of the jar. That's what I also want you to do for ghee, all right? Or butter. <laughs> but tonight we're talking ghee. So just bring that water up to the bottom of the ring 
and then water bath your ghee for one hour. And it doesn't matter if you're in a half pint jar or a pint jar. Um, I can't imagine who would ever need a quart of ghee. Um, but if you want to do your ghee in a quart size jar, it would be the same thing. Just bring that water level up to the bottom of the ring and then water bath it for one hour. Absolutely gorgeous. Because I strained through my, uh, my wire mesh and my cheesecloth, I have zero sediment in the bottoms of my jar. Sorry, that's really hot. Um, just look at this beautiful gold product. Now this will solidify and cool off. And let me see if I can reach my jar over here. Where did I put it? This is ghee that I canned last year. 1221, all right? And it will look like butter, but I didn't have to shake this product to um, reincorporate all of the milk solids. As it cools, this is what it will look like, okay? So if it cools and it turns this beautiful yellow color and you say, that looks like butter, and then you wonder, did I do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. This right here, this will turn into this as it cools, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the rest of these absolutely beautiful jars. I'm so excited. You know, every canning um, project is an adventure. And I don't care that I've been doing this for over 40 years. You guys, it's still exciting. It's still exciting to see something come out of your canner that is just so absolutely perfect and lovely. Um, and I guess that is another one of those things about canning that, you know, um, not only are you preserving food for your family, but it's really a feeling of accomplishment that never gets old. It never gets old. I might get old. And I might have done this for four decades, but doggone it, this still feels good. It still feels good that I can pull something out of the canner like this that's so beautiful. And I know I'm going to be able to place it on my shelves for years to come. And that just gives me a sense of security and a sense of accomplishment and a sense of happiness and peace. I just really feel like ghee is as shelf stable as rendered pork lard is, as long as you do it correctly. Um, so cook all of those milk fats out, let them brown, um, let the water evaporate out. You saw the different um, boiling that occurred, you know. At, the, at, at first it's kind of a, um, a low boil and we were getting that blurpy type boil um, and then at the end it kind of started sounding like it was frying and all of the bubbles were a lot smaller and I let it go for even longer than that and when I tipped the pan and I could see that those milk solids that were cooking to the bottom of the pan were turning brown and that's when I knew it was done. So as long as you process this, as long as you cook it on your stovetop for long enough, um, I can safely tell you it's going to be shelf stable. Uh, and I really feel that it's going to be shelf stable whether you open kettle it or whether you process it like I do. Um, either hot water bath for an hour and, or, um, you know, in the pressure canner, up to pressure and then off. Or even if you decide to process it like meat, 
and do it for um, you know pints with 75 minutes pressure can or three hours water bath. Um, any of those methods, I really feel as long as you have properly cooked down your butter into ghee, I really feel very strongly that it will be shelf stable for you. So I hope that you found all of this information and I know that I ramble on sometimes. Um, you're just going to have to put up with me. I'm sorry. Either listen or don't. <laughs> I love y'all though, <laughs> um, and I hope you love me too. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found it all um, interesting and informative and helpful. And until we meet again, happy canning, everybody. <laughs>